Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and today we're going to go over a teaching series for anatomy and physiology, specifically the integumentary system, also known as the skin system. In this video, I'm going to go over some things you may see on your anatomy and physiology exam. I'm going to cover the function of the skin layers. I'm going to go over the function of the appendages of the skin and the sensory organs. Then afterwards, we're going to take a little short quiz and I highly encourage you to visit my website, RegisteredNurseRN.com and and take the other part of the quiz that goes along with this video because chances are you'll see some of those questions on your exam coming up and I want you to be as prepared as possible for the exam. So let's get started. First let's talk a little bit about the skin. The skin and its appendages make up what's called the integumentary system. The skin is an organ, it's not a tissue, that performs a vital function for our body. Some of the functions it performs are controls our body temperature, protects us from UV radiation and from the sun, and other environmental hazards. Also, we have sensors in our skin that help protect us by making us more aware of our environment. For instance, say that we're fixing to touch something hot. Our sensors in our skin sense that and allow us to pull our hand back before we become really badly burned. So our skin is an awesome organ. Now let's talk about the two distinct layers of the skin. You have two distinct layers. You have first the top layer, which is the epidermis. Then you have the second layer, which is the dermis. The, the epidermis is the superficial layer. So it's the one on the top. The next is a dermis la layer, which is a fibrous connective tissue that is just below the epidermis. Now you have a layer below the epidermis, below the dermis that's called the hypodermis. The hypodermis is not part of the integumentary system, but it's included in any diagram you may see or you look at. It's just a little fatty layer underneath the dermis that helps keep our body warm. But that's really important. So remember, the hypodermis is there, it's a fatty layer, but it's not part of the integumentary system. Now let's go over this diagram behind me of all the appendages and sensory organs, and I'm gonna go over the function of each. So if you want, take some notes. Here is a basic drawing of a skin layer, and we're gonna go over these each individually. First, let's go over the layers of the skin. We have the epidermis, which is the superficial layer. It is made up of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium that contains four distinct types of cells. And I would make note of this. You have the first type is keratinocytes, you have melanocytes, Merkel cells, and Langerhans cells that make up the epidermis. Next, we have the dermis. This is the second layer below the epidermis. And it is a strong, connective, flexible tissue. It contains nerves and nerve fibers and blood vessels, which you can see the artery and the vein right there. And in the dermis, we have two layers. We have the dermal papilla, and this is the superficial layer. It only makes up 20% of the dermis. So remember that, it only makes up 20%. And it has finger-like pegs. Right here in this drawing, I flipped it up so you can see, because it connects to that. And they're like finger-like pegs, which rest on your epidermis. And then next, right here, you have the reticular layer. And this makes up 80% of the dermis and it is just a network of collagen layers. Next we have the hypodermis and like I said it's not technically part of the integumentary system but um, it is listed whenever you're studying it and it's just the fat layer and what it does is it acts as an insulator for our body to keep us warm. Now on to the appendages of the skin. There are appendages and they are called you have the hair follicles, you have the sebaceous glands, sweat glands, and of course the nails, but the nails are not shown in here. So those are the four different types of appendages of the skin. Now let's go over the hair, which is like a hair shaft. The hair's function is to allow the body to sense things like lightly touch our skin and areas of our body to keep warm. For example, eyelashes. Why do we have eyelashes? To keep our eyes from having particles in it. And even our nose hairs keeps us from inhaling lint. So your hairs play a great function for your body. And then next you have the hair follicle. 
this is this little green layer outlining this hair shaft and the hair follicle just extends from the epidermis into the dermis and then next you have the root plexus this is a nerve it's a knot of sensory nerve endings that wrap around the hair bulb and what it does is like whenever your hair gets touched or barely moved, you can feel it. And the reason you can feel when your hair is moved or touched is because of the root hair plexus. It's a sensory nerve that allows you to feel when someone touches your hair. Next, we have the erector pilii muscle. This little muscle is located where your hair shaft is around that root hair plexus. And what it does is it is a bundle of smooth muscle cells that produces goosebumps on the skin. So the key to remember with this erector pilii muscle is, is it produces goosebumps. That's probably gonna be a test question. Think how you remember that is erector. It erects your skin your skin, your hair. So whenever you get goosebumps, you, your skin erects and the hairs on your arms stand up. So just remember that for erector pilii muscle. Next, around the erector pilii muscle are sebaceous glands, these little green things right here. And sebaceous glands are known as oil glands. They produce an oily product called sebum and it's they're found everywhere these little glands are found everywhere except for the palms and soles of your body so remember that no sebaceous glands on the palms or the soles next we're going to go to what's called the sweat glands and these are also called sudoriferous glands and they produce sweat and notice we have a pore right here and right here and this little purple thing going down is a sweat gland because you sweat out of your pores and Sweat glands or sudoriferous glands are found everywhere except on the nipples or parts of the external genitalia. So that's the only place you won't find those. Now there's two types of sweat glands. And here in this picture, we just have one type, but I'll go over the second type here in a second. But we have what's called an endocrine, endocrine gland. And this is a duct of glands that runs to the opening of the skin called the pore, and it secretes sweat. And there are numerous endocrine glands on the body. Now you have the second type, which is the apocrine gland. This is not on the diagram, like I said, because of where they're found. They're found in the axillary, anal, and genitalia areas, and they produce like a special type of sweat that contains fatty substances and proteins, and they're not as numerous as your endocrine glands. But it's always good to know that there's two. Ne next, we have the Meisner corpuscle. This is a nerve ending. And this is responsible for sensitivity to light touch. And notice it's located a little bit more superficial up of the skin because whenever you're lightly touched on your skin, this is what is responsible for you feeling that sensation. And then the next nerve ending is called the Pansini corpuscle. And it's these little pink little things, swirly things right there. And that is responsible for our sensitivity to pain and pressure. So whenever you get pain on your skin or pressure, this little guy is responsible for you feeling that. Now, we went over our diagram and let's do a little couple of quiz questions. So let's see what it says. The skin is composed of blank layers. So whenever we were looking at our skin diagram, how many layers do you remember that there were? Let's look at our choices. We have A3, B2, C2 and a half, or D4. Now let's think about this because it's a little bit tricky. You have your top layer, which is your epidermis. Then you have your second layer, which is your dermis. And what did I say at the beginning of the video? There's only two distinct layers. Because remember, a lot of people might wanna put three because they're thinking that the hypodermis is part of the integumentary system, but it's not. So they don't consider that a layer. So the skin only has two layers, which are your epidermis and dermis. So A, C, and D are wrong, so we can mark those out. And the answer is B, two. Now take rest of this quiz on my website, registerednursrn.com. A link should pop up in the video and you can just click it and go and take the quiz. And I hope this helped you for studying for your integumentary system um, AMP exam. I hope you pass. And be sure to check out my other AMP lecture tutorials and quizzes. And thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to this YouTube channel.